Welcome to Living Life. Do you know that people are praying for you right now that you don't even know about? They're praying for your health. They're praying for your finances. They're praying for your blessings in your life. You know, there's a song that uh, we used to sing in the church, and it went something like this. Somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. They took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. And as we go through this passage, we'll see that Solomon was praying for the nation of Israel, kind of in a preemptive sense, uh, anticipating things that might happen, uh, calling upon God. So let's take a look at the passage and see how this all works out. Second Chronicles chapter 6, verses 12 through 42. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the whole assembly of Israel and spread out his hands. Now he had made a bronze platform five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high, and had placed in it the center of the outer court. He stood on the platform and then knelt down before the whole assembly of Israel and spread out his hands toward heaven. He said, Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven or on earth. You who keep your covenant of love with your servants, who continue wholeheartedly in your way. You have kept your promise to your servant David, my father. With your mouth you have promised, and with your hand you have fulfilled it, as it is today. Now, Lord, the God of Israel, keep for your servant David, my father, the promises you made to him when you said, You shall never fail to have a successor to sit before me on the throne of Israel, if only your descendants are careful in all they do to walk before me according to my law as you have done. And now, Lord, the God of Israel, let your word that you promised your servant David come true. But will God really dwell on earth with humans? The heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built. Yet, Lord, my God, give attention to your servant's prayer and his plea for mercy. Hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence. May your eyes be open toward this temple day and night, this place of which you said you would put your name there. May you hear the prayer your servant prayers toward this place. Hear the supplications of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. When anyone wrongs their neighbor and is required to take an oath, and they come and swear the oath before your altar in this temple, then hear from heaven and act. Judge between your servants, condemning the guilty and bringing down on their heads what they have done, and vindicating the innocent by treating them in accordance with their innocence. When your people Israel have been defeated by an enemy because they have sinned against you, and when they turn back and give praise to your name, praying and making supplication before you in this temple, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them back to the land you gave to them and their ancestors. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because your people have sinned against you, and when they pray toward this place and give praise to your name and turn from their sin because you have afflicted them, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel. Teach them the right way to live and send rain on the land you gave your people for an inheritance. When famine or plague comes to the land, or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, or when enemies besiege them in any of their cities, whatever disaster or disease may come, 
And when a prayer or plea is made by anyone among your people Israel, being aware of their afflictions and pains, and spreading out their hands toward this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place. Forgive and deal with everyone according to all they do, since you know their hearts, for you alone know the human heart, so that they will fear you and walk in obedience to you all the time they live in the land you gave our ancestors. Welcome back to Living Life. The passage begins uh, with Solomon uh, praying in dedication of the temple. The temple has been completed, and now Solomon is praying uh, to dedicate the temple. And his prayer is really, really interesting and really exciting uh, as we go through the prayer. The first thing Solomon is praying about, he's praying about the fact that God is a covenant-keeping God and that also he's really, really excited about the fact that God would consider dwelling with human beings even though he is above all creation and cannot be contained. Uh, Solomon is really enamored and, and about this. Also, uh, it's interesting that he says in his prayer, he actually implores God as part of his prayer to hear from heaven on behalf of the Israelite people. He, he says uh, that may God your eyes be open and your ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. So really what he was trying to do is he was trying to make the temple and he wanted God to make the temple central, the focal point of all Jewish and Israelite life. And by doing that, uh, it, to the extent that one would pray uh, in the temple for various, in various situations or pray towards the temple, uh, then they would receive relief and they would receive, God would hear from heaven and God would act on their behalf. Now it's interesting, I remember Daniel, if you remember Daniel, uh, and Daniel uh, was facing the edict with respect to praying, he, no one was to pray. However, Daniel went back up into his room, he opened the windows towards the east, and he prayed uh, towards the temple. Uh, so we see even Daniel offering prayers toward the temple. Now, as we look through this, specifically, Solomon, Solomon uh, goes through some particular scenarios where he would ask God to hear from heaven, uh, forgive the people as they repented and praised his name. One of the scenarios that Solomon talks about uh, is the administration of justice. He says the temple should be a place where God adjudicates the wrongs of uh, the Israelites, uh, the guilt or the innocence of the Israelites. Uh, an example of this could be the cities of refuge, which was a place that someone uh, could flee to where they accidentally caused the killing. And the elders of that town, uh, through God's, uh, through God's uh, direction uh, and guidance, would reveal whether or not uh, the, the person who had fled to that town and was seeking refuge would be entitled to it. A refuge. So that would be an example of it. Another thing that he was praying in anticipation of, or pre, I like to say peremptory in a peremptory way, uh, was to forgive the nation when they were defeated in battle because of sin. Um, we saw an example of this with Achan's sin, uh, where Achan had stolen devoted things uh, from the battle, and the uh, Israelites lost in the battle of Ai. Uh, because of Achan. They were routed in that. But Solomon is uh, praying that when the, the Israelites are defeated because of their sin in the battle, that God would forgive them. He also prays that God would forgive the Israelite nation if there's drought because of sin, where God holds back the rain or if there's pestilence or disease. He was praying uh, in anticipation of the Israelites sinning, that God would hear from heaven and God would forgive them as they repented. Um, so we see this idea of Solomon praying in an intercessory way for the nation of Israel, even before these occurrences, uh, some of these occurrences would happen, uh, using the temple as a central focal point 
for God since God's presence is there. So this prayer he put before God. He also says as foreigners come into uh, the temple, uh, he wanted God to even hear the prayers of the foreigners who were seeking his face. This whole idea anticipates Gentiles and even Gentiles seeking the face of God, not just the Jews. So we see how both Jew and Gentile in anticipation would come together for God. He also finally said blessed that the people would be blessed uh, in b times of battle, and especially if they were captured, if they repented, that God would forgive them uh, and he uh, heal them. So at the conclusion of this prayer uh, that he says, he, t he implores God to go to his resting place, which is in the temple, and the, pharaoh, and the priest, and, in the, and those who worked in the temple. Uh, and, but he says, uh, finally, all of this should be done through this prayer, not because Solomon had anything special to present to God, not because the Israelites had anything special to God present to God, but simply because God is a covenant-keeping, covenant-faithful God who's loyal in his love to the people of Israel. And that's the reason why God should hear Solomon's prayer and act accordingly. God was a covenant-keeping God, a God of faithfulness to David and to the dynasty, to those who would sit on the throne after him, and to Solomon, and ultimately right through the line leading to Jesus. God is a covenant, promise-keeping God. Do you know this covenant-keeping, promise-keeping God? If you don't, today is your day to know him. And the promise that he makes to you today, if you would only seek him, is one of eternal life and peace with him for all eternity. If you don't know that peace and you don't have eternal life, now go before the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for every opportunity that you give us to share your word, to share your truth with those who may not know you today. We ask all of this in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you. 시청자 여러분의 소중한 후원으로 제작됩니다. 